program, but there will be a similar kind of research study done in Edinburgh and how what kind of form that would take it would be for Edinburgh in terms of um, the buildings and institutions. <laughs> Um, so I think there does need to be more research done. I think um, we already know quite a bit. I mean, Lisa knows uh, a great deal. I don't know why she pointed oh, to me to help you. But we know that, um, for instance, and uh, I think Summer is here, uh, who was a, a student in course I taught or last semester and did some research about the, um, the building of Old College. Um, and um, trace some of the, the uh, people who contributed to the fundraising effort uh, to, to build Old College in the uh, late 18th century and she was able to trace uh, that some of those people had, had connections to, uh, to slavery in the Caribbean and I think some to North America as well. Um, and I'm sure that um, additional work that could be done, for instance, on the building of the new town would be able to find um, uh, further um, points, points there. Um, we know that there were uh, professors in the, in the university who had connections with um, uh, slave trading families and slave owning families. We know that uh, the medical school um, was uh, educating uh, lots and lots of physicians at the time, physicians and surgeons, uh, many more than who could find employment in Scotland or even in Britain, uh, and many of whom ended up taking uh, roles on uh, as the surgeon uh, on slave trading ships or in plantations in the Caribbean. Um, so for all of those kinds of things could be investigated uh, further and need to be investigated further. I think that the... Um, you know, one of the things that the Glasgow report did uh, was it tried to put a, a number uh, on the, the, the value to Glasgow University of, um, of, of donations that came from, from um, the slavery economy in, uh, overall. And I think that while we might be able to, to do that, I think in some ways that isn't the most important point. Because one of the things I was trying to show in the two examples that I gave uh, earlier was that um, this is very kind of... In, integrated into everyday life and it's, it's flows of, of income to people who also have lots of other flows of income um, and it's very hard to actually nail down, you know, okay, well this percentage of the university's um, income or of the city's um, foundation is based on uh, Atlantic um, trade in some form or, or other. And in some ways you can then get kind of diverted into a kind of back and forth, oh that was really a lot of money, no that was not such a lot of money. Um, which is a bit beside the point and that's why I, uh, I also put an emphasis on the, uh, the cultural, the ideological uh, impact of being connected to uh, slavery and the way in which that uh, created um, racial categorization and the ongoing uh, implications of that, which could happen whether it was you know point 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 zero 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 one percent or ninety five percent actually, and, um, you know so obviously it's somewhere in between those those figures. But I don't think we necessarily need to to work out exactly what percentage of uh, economic value it is. And in some ways, I think historians have been a bit too fixated on trying to put. Uh, quantify the impact of uh, slavery um, broadly to the Scottish and the British economy uh, 